All right, this is a uh, video on backup refrigeration power. You can use either off a generator or solar power to be off-grid or emergency situations. What I've got here is a small chest freezer. It's a uh, Igloo brand. It's about three and a half cubic feet. And uh, I just put some water in it, so it's struggling to get back down to zero. I'm using it as a freezer right now, so I'm doing a day's worth of testing on freezer. Um, I know from previous measurements that this freezer will take about 550 or so watts in a day that it cycles on and off. In order to convert this from a freezer to a refrigerator, I've got a Johnson control. Um, this is a very simple switching mechanism where it measures the temperature that gets stuck down inside the freezer. I've got a variable control and you just plug the input power into this and it'll cut it off at uh, yeah, about 30, 35 degrees or so is what I usually like to use for a refrigerator, certainly no more than 40 degrees. Um, this guy here, this Johnson Control, costs you about $50 on Amazon. And something like this refrigerator, uh, I picked this up at a Home Depot liquidator for $75, but otherwise it's about $150 um, dollars new. Why you want to use a chest freezer, is, uh, especially a top opening chest freezer, is that it doesn't let the air out and it's insulated all around so you get better efficiency. Uh, with the Johnson Control, I use it running as a refrigerator. I've tested it before in the summertime in my garage here in Florida where it's about 85 degrees and it would run for under, under 200 watts a day, uh, which is what you really need to get to because, you know, like a full-size refrigerator, um, with a freezer on top or something like that. The one that I've measured in my house is uh, about 1,000, 1,300 watts a day. I've got a couple other alternatives I'm just going to look at here. Uh, just to show you, I do have one of these powered in uh, Coleman type coolers that is electric. A um, couple of things that are not so good about this. Uh, it, it's not so, not so big in size, you know, you can only fit a little bit of items. Um, it does draw about four and a half to five amps of DC power, uh, which is quite a lot, and it runs continuously, so it's not cycling on and off. Uh, I'll give some calculations on the website as to what that comes out and why it's um, not very energy efficient. Also, it'll only run about maybe 40 degrees below what the ambient temperature is, so if you're 85 degrees and you're out of power, it's not going to quite get down to that 40 or below that you really need for food. Um, also in my collection, I've got one of these portable ice makers that I picked up. Um, and that runs the same thing. That does run on AC, but it does draw about four and a half. You could make 30 pounds of ice in a day, but you got to watch it every three hours. So really, you divide that by two. But again, it's not as energy efficient as just using a chest freezer as a refrigerator in a backup scenario. Um, so I talked about the refrigerator, I talked about the, uh, the Johnson control here to make a switch, a thermal switch. Of course, you're going to need an inverter. I'm going to run off a battery system here. I'm not going to run off a generator all day because um, you're going to use a lot of gas on a generator. What I'm trying to do is, is buffer that generator with a, a, a battery backup system. So uh, this is a very expensive uh, Sunforce. 1000 watt true sine wave inverter that I've got hooked up. Uh, you don't need to go with something as big as that. That's about $180 on Amazon. Um, but, you know, it does nicely put out uh, true sine wave instead of a modified sine wave. And also it's a little more efficient. I mean, most inverters are uh, usually as a calculation you can use about a 15% loss going from D uh, DC to AC. Um, and just for example, I've got a, you know, $40 I think it's 750 watt um, Harbor Freight. That'll do the job just fine. Um, both of these only run their fans when the, when they're drawing power, heavy power. So they're quite quiet. Uh, you can actually the um, um, refrigerator's compressing uh, right now, and, and we're not getting uh, any fan noise from this guy. So it's not drawing a, a whole lot of watts, which I which is the key for a day. Um, Feeding the uh, the inverter currently, I have a couple of these. Uh, I got them from Walmart. They're Deep Cycle Marine. Um, if you can read the tag there, they're the 95 series, which I think is 29 uh, class or whatever they call the batteries. It's rated for 122 amp hours, drawing one amp hour. Of course, the more amps you draw, um, the less that capacity is. But I got a pair of them here, so it's uh, you know 240 
amp hours at one amp, you know, uh, 20, 40 amp hours drawing one amp hour. Um, we're usually going to draw about five or something when this guy's running over here. So uh, slightly less, just a couple hundred amp hours capacity. Capacity in amp hours is, is what's important. Um, you know, ideally, uh, when I get over to the charger over here, I'll really need another couple set of those. But these are $100 a piece, uh, $85 plus a core plus tax. Uh, of course, I can run the system like this, and it would be just fine in an emergency. Um, but you are using uh, X percent of the, uh, the battery capacity. Um, just off base, I've got a little DC fan. These are a great item. I think they're about 20 bucks on, online. Uh, they'll keep you cool in an emergency. And uh, they move a little bit of wind. I think they're 10 inch, uh, not for a personal, you know, personal space. And they, at high speed, they uh, draw uh, half an amp DC, and at uh, medium speed, a quarter amp. So they'll, they'll last a good long time. You can actually put eight, I think, uh, D cell batteries or something, and it'll run for a couple weeks. Uh, but if you're going to run it off, I've got you know some uh, uh, universal batteries that, uh, of course, you can hook in. It just plugs in with a cigarette lighter and do the conversion. So yeah, at nighttime, if it's really hot and you've lost your power, uh, that's a good backup just to keep you cool. So I've got uh, feeding the batteries. Uh, this is my brand new unit. Uh, it's a RV grade uh, power supply, um, a, a charger basically. Yeah, it looks a lot like a computer power supply. It's a lot bigger in size. Uh, don't really like the, the fan on the back end, but it will run after a little bit of while. Um, 55 amps is a lot. Um, I guess I should step back. These are uh, Zero gauge cables, you really don't know to go, need to go to that extreme. Um, what I've got is some basic feeding it out of this uh, 55 DC amp charger. I've got this basic uh, four gauge, it's a little tough to fit in the back. Uh, probably six gauge would be a little bit better. Of course, you need uh, 10 gauge, but I probably wouldn't run 10 gauge with uh, 55 DC amps. That's going to get pretty hot pretty quick. These don't get hot at all, they're pretty short. I made them very short. Um, and so, obviously, with 200 or so, you know, um, amp hours of capacity and a 55 amp charger, you're talking about a capacity over four. Um, and there's good and bad on the internet about that type of rate. Most people say, hey, C over eight, you know, one tenth or C over ten um, type charging rate. So, you know, something like that would be a 20 amp, you know, charge. But it takes quite a while to do that. So my experiment that I'm running right now is to try to run, you know, uh, this is a, like a C over 4 type charger, maybe you're going to C over 3 when you, when you figure out the capacity that you're pushing. Um, and just to see, you know, obviously the more amps you put into the battery, the quicker it is. It gets hotter, it shortens your duty cycles and stuff like that. Uh, it's not highly recommended, but as long as it doesn't overheat, um, some people said C over 4 is just fine. Uh, C over 2 would be, I guess, too much from, from some of the website looking things. Um, but it, um, yeah, it's C over four. I'm hoping to run my generator for half an hour or an hour, you know, for, for, for what I'm doing and, uh, per day, uh, which is what I'm trying to get down to. Obviously, if you're, you're, you have to run your generator four or five hours, you know, generators are noisy. They use up gas, et cetera, et cetera. I also have, uh, let's see, I have it down below. I have one of those $90 Harbor Freight, um, generators, you know, it's 800 watt cheapo. It runs on two stroke, you know, uh, oil, gas. Um, but the nice part about this particular setup with the 55 amp, uh, when you, when you figure in, this probably has about a 15% loss too. Um, so the AC amps, I do have a kilowatt meter. I've got it hooked up to a house power right now, um, and it's off. But when it's, the max draw on this one is about 750, 770. Um, so it fits kind of within that 800, uh, watt, um, that our, my generator is going to put out. So I won't need a bigger generator. So uh, this is like on the cheap. So this guy, um, this guy's $120. Um, again, it's RV grade, but it's not really, it's made to be inside the RV compartment. So I really wouldn't put it outside. It's not really waterproof. It's a glorified uh, um, power, computer power supply type item um, that I plan on running off the generator. I've got a couple other chargers that I've used previously. This is uh, um, an Amazon special also. It's about $65, $70. I bought this because it's got the 20 amp charging. They call it the Rally uh, Marine Grade. Uh, one thing I did notice with the cable, it's got it's got a normal, uh, these are what the clamps go to. Uh, they get quite quite hot at uh, 20 amps. Uh, warm, I'll call it. Not super hot. Not enough to cover, cause a fire, but I wouldn't want to 
necessarily leave it unattended and you definitely want some space around there but I've, I've charged it up a few times at the 20 amp setting it's got a 10 amp and a 2 amp obviously but I'm looking for the maximum charge um, in this particular scenario I'm not I'm, I'm looking at an emergency scenario where I'm not running off house power um, it's a little quieter I had an old Schumacher uh, um, it's a 1200A SE 1200A it's got 12 amp top top range um, what I don't, you know, this one's a little bit louder than this one fan-wise, and both of these run the fan full-time, whereas when this one, this power max is on, uh, it, it'll run the, the fan after a while at temp, but, uh, it's pretty quiet. Um, the, uh, the Schumacher also goes up to, like, 15.7 or 16 volts, uh, which I don't particularly like for normal usage, you know, even on the 2-amp setting. Um, I know, I guess it's probably, uh, you know, overcooking or whatever it's doing to get the maximum charge in there, but... I really don't like stuff like my deep cell to be above the 14.7. The nice thing about the rally, it only runs up to the 14.7. And same thing with this guy here, it'll run up to 14.7 max. Um, so that's a, um, a good wrap up. I got some, some prices and stuff like that. I'm going to edit this video and then uh, day two tomorrow, I'll try to run what I'm, um, I'll turn on the power max here and do a little review on that and uh, try to get the. Um, amperage and how long I need to run uh, to get up to a reasonable rate. All right, I'm signing off now. Bye. If you want to run the, uh, instead of running a charger generator system, you know, your hookup would be at this point here. Um, you'd have to put solar in line there. I've got a solar panel here. This one's a 20 watt uh, Instapark. I got that off of Amazon. And of course, after the solar um, solar panel, you need a solar charger. This one happens to be a 7 amp. It's about $20. Um, usually, solar power is anywhere from $2 to $3 per watt. I think this was about $60 for the, the 20 watt. But uh, what from the calculations um, that I'm going to put on the website, you can visit. You know, obviously, if you're trying to do 200 watts a day for the refrigerator, and you divide that by five um, in terms of uh, you know, five good hours of sunlight. Um, and we always doubt whether you'll have sunlight or not in an emergency, uh, especially if it's a storm. But anyways, that would be a 40, uh, 40 to 50 watts. You really need a 50 watt solar panel. So you'd be talking about $150. So for, for this, it would actually kind of make sense. And it's good if your gas runs out because you've got to figure you got to have gas. But the, uh, the Harbor Freight uh, um, little 800 watt generator for running that for an hour only takes, uh, you know, a third of a tank of gas or something. I mean, a third of a gallon of gas. Um, so, yeah, you can make gas last, last a long way that way. But solar would be a nice backup. You would need 50 watt to run the, uh, the um, igloo as a, uh, a refrigerator. Of course, when you go to 500 watts, then the power changes and the price goes up enormously. All right.